In this video, we are going to begin exploring ways to synthesize carboxylic acids. Specifically here in this particular video, we're going to look at how we make these carboxylic acids via oxidation reactions, starting with alkenes, aldehyde, or alcohol reactants. Some of the reactions we will see in this video should be a review of earlier reactions that we learned. Others may be more uh, novel reactions for you. So let's go ahead and take a closer look, keeping in mind that the theme throughout here being oxidation reactions means by definition that we are going to be increasing the number of covalent bonds between carbon and an atom that is more electronegative than carbon. Specifically, we're gonna be increasing the number of bonds between carbon and oxygen here. And as a result, we are going to be lowering the number of bonds between carbon and hydrogen. So that's how we can recognize that we're carrying out oxidation reactions to accomplish the synthesis of carboxylic acids. In these cases, we're increasing the number of bonds between carbon and oxygen, making carbon-oxygen single bonds or carbonyl groups. And as a requirement for doing so without going over that TET rule, we're lowering the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. And this is going to be a general theme of oxidation is that the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds decreases, the number of bonds between carbon and some atom more electronegative than carbon increases. So let's go ahead and look at starting with alkenes as our starting materials for creating the carboxylic acid group. So we're looking at alkenes and we're going to oxidize those. So I'm going to put an O in brackets here to indicate oxidation to give us a carboxylic acid product. In these reactions, what we will do is begin with your alkene of choice which I'm going to plug in as just a carbon-carbon double bond here. And I'm going to plug in for this particular generic example, a hydrogen, hydrogen atom there, and I'm gonna make the rest of these groups R groups or R prime, R double prime, just to distinguish that they could be different. And all of these R groups in this particular example are going to be alkyl groups or carbon chains, carbon rings, um, some sort of non-hydrogen group there. So what's going to happen here is if we treat this with an oxidizing agent, generally this is going to be concentrated potassium permanganate. So I'm putting there C-O-N-C for concentrated potassium permanganate, K-M-N-O-4. This is not the first time we've seen potassium permanganate. It's an oxidizing agent. What the potassium permanganate is going to do is it is going to result in the breakage of the bond between the two carbon atoms, I'm putting the squig of the line between there, and place a carbonyl group here and here on each of the two carbons that were part of that carbon-carbon bond. This so far is looking much like the ozonolysis reactions that we have looked at previously of alkenes where we broke the carbon-carbon double bond in order to create our product. So we'll go ahead and plug in our carbonyl group here and our carbonyl group here on the other carbon that originated from the alkene, leaving our R groups the same and hydrogens the same as they were. So our two carbons here and here from our alkene that I've highlighted become the carbon here and here of our carbonyl. Now, since we have an oxidizing agent present there, potassium permanganate, the aldehyde product of this reaction that I'm circling doesn't remain an aldehyde for long because aldehydes are very, very susceptible to oxidation reactions. So what's going to happen is that that aldehyde reacts further with our oxidizing agent and reacts, in fact, more readily than the starting material did. So it's really not possible to stop the reaction at this point of the aldehyde. So the aldehyde gets further oxidized to give us a carboxylic acid product. And what happens there is that in that oxidation, the hydrogen carbon bond, that is the bond right here that I'm highlighting in our aldehyde reactant, is converted into a hydroxy group by a donation of the oxygen from our potassium permanganate oxidizing agent. On the other hand, when we bring in oxidizing agent, potassium permanganate, and react it with the ketone, there are no carbon-hydrogen bonds directly here at the orange oxidizable carbon. 
And the carbon-carbon bonds here are very resistant to breakage. And so as a result, there is no reaction. And so the final product here would just be that ketone. It's not going to react any further. So I'm just redrawing it here so that we can highlight what our final two major organic products are of the reaction. So if you see potassium permanganate with an alkene, what we are going to do is replace each of the carbon-carbon bonds with a carbonyl group. And then if there are any aldehyde products that result from that, those get further oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So that is going to be one of our routes to make a carboxylic acid. And we can do that starting from an alkene reactant of our choice. Um, and in order for that alkene reactant to ultimately yield a carboxylic acid as one or more of the major organic products, it's going to have to have a CH bond directly there on the starting alkene group so that, that can get oxidized all the way through to a carboxylic acid. Let's do an example of this reaction with some real groups as our R groups rather than just uh, generic filler material there. So we'll go ahead and start with this as our alkene. We're going to react with potassium permanganate, KMnO4. And I'm going to ask, what is the major organic product of this reaction? So what do we need to place right here? Now, as we think about this, keep in mind that what we will be doing is we're going to break this carbon-carbon double bond and replace that carbon-carbon double bond with a carbonyl on each of those two carbons. So as we go through and work toward doing that, let's go ahead and draw what would result initially from breaking that carbon-carbon bond would be formaldehyde because that carbon at the terminal, this carbon right here that I'm highlighting on the reactant side of our alkene, has two hydrogens directly bonded there. It would have a hydrogen here and here as its two R groups. And so therefore, when that becomes a carbonyl with the two hydrogens directly bonded, it becomes the aldehyde here. And then furthermore, coming over to this side, we can go ahead and draw that out as well. We'll go ahead and draw in our carbonyl. And our carbonyl was directly bonded to one hydrogen atom because there's one hydrogen directly bonded right here. So I plug in that hydrogen and then I draw my alkyl group that is bonded to that carbonyl. So we'll go ahead and draw out all of that. And then at this point, we have two aldehydes resulting from this reaction that we've done initially. Those are super easily oxidized, so you would not be able to isolate those generally to identify and work with them further. Instead, they're going to get further oxidized, so we can go ahead and draw that in. That's our aldehyde on the right is going to get converted to the carboxylic acid that I'm drawing here. I'm putting that oxygen in red for emphasis because that's what's changing about the molecule is that the um, oxidizing agent, the potassium permanganate, is providing that oxygen in the oxidation reaction. And then our formaldehyde, in the case of formaldehyde, what can actually happen is that since it has two carbon-hydrogen bonds here, it is actually the only aldehyde that can have both of those sides of the carbonyl get oxidized to give this, where we have two carboxylic acid groups sharing that same carbonyl group there. So in total, our final major organic product for this reaction we would want to report as what I have circled here. Now, continuing our theme of, of molecules getting oxidized to carboxylic acids, we turn our attention to primary alcohols being oxidized to give carboxylic acid products. In these reactions, we will start with our primary alcohol, such as ethanol or any other primary alcohol. Remember, we define a primary alcohol as an alcohol where the hydroxy group is bonded to a carbon, and that carbon has only one direct bond to another carbon. So this chain here could be as long as we want, but what's important is that this particular carbon that has the hydroxy group on is only bonded directly to one carbon atom. So in oxidizing a primary alcohol, 
we have a variety of different possibilities of oxidizing agents. We have a variety of chromium-6 reagents, such as, as an example of this, H2CRO4. So we could go ahead and write out uh, this chromic acid structure, H2CRO4. We can also use bleach, sodium hypochlorite, which is NaOCl. Bleach, and you will sometimes see the bleach used with a catalyst known as Tempo. So Tempo I'm gonna put in as optional, but don't be alarmed if you see that as a catalyst of this reaction. Not required, but will speed up the reaction rate. And what's going to happen during this reaction is that Following our theme of oxidation, the oxidizable carbon is going to be the carbon that has the hydroxy group onto it, so the carbon that I've highlighted in pink there, is going to become oxidized. And initially what that oxidation is going to do is it's going to replace the carbon-oxygen single bond to the alcohol group here with a carbonyl group. And so we'll go ahead and fill in that carbonyl group. So you have our two carbon chains still, and now our hydroxy group has been replaced with the carbonyl group. To fill the octet, that's going to leave one hydrogen atom right here. So we originally had a CH2 group here. What we did was keeping with our theme of removing carbon hydrogen bonds and replacing those with carbon oxygen bonds. Here we have our CH2. It becomes CH. We removed a hydrogen to enable the placement of that carbonyl group. And now this is an aldehyde since we oxidized a primary carbon. And aldehydes, as we have seen throughout, are very easily oxidizable. And so the reaction can't be stopped at this particular location. Instead, the reagents that we have up here, whichever one we chose to use, will continue oxidizing the aldehyde to give a carboxylic acid product. Just like what we saw um, earlier when we oxidized an alkene and we created an aldehyde product initially from that, and that aldehyde got further oxidized by the presence of oxidizing agents. So here, um, similarly, our aldehyde is going to get further oxidized to give, ultimately, this carboxylic acid product, in this case, acetic acid or ethanoic acid, whichever you like to call it there by its common name or IUPAC name, respectively. So in this particular reaction, um, starting with a primary alcohol, our carboxylic acid is going to be the product of that oxidation. Keep in mind, this will only work for primary alcohols. It does not work for secondary or tertiary alcohols. Instead, secondary or tertiary alcohols are going to get oxidized to give, um, in the case of secondary alcohols, secondary alcohols will give ketone products. So secondary alcohol oxidation gives a ketone, and that ketone can't be further oxidized. Tertiary alcohols, they don't have any direct bonds between carbon and hydrogen at the carbon that has the hydroxy group on it, so those are going to generally have no reaction because there's no carbon-hydrogen bonds to break there. So keep this in mind as well so you don't um, get tricked into thinking that you are oxidizing a secondary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. That's not going to happen. It will stop at the ketone product because the ketone has no direct bond between carbon and hydrogen to further oxidize. Unlike the aldehyde, where we have this carbon-hydrogen bond right here that I'm highlighting in our aldehyde in the upper right corner that becomes further oxidized by breaking that carbon-hydrogen bond and replacing it with a carbon-oxygen bond there. So this brings us to our third and final starting material for the oxidation reactions that we are talking about to yield carboxylic acids. And this third and final one is starting with an aldehyde reactant to give us a carboxylic acid product via oxidation. This is very much a review of the rest of the video that we've looked at so far because in all the other reactions we looked at so far, we created an aldehyde as an intermediate and then that aldehyde was further oxidized to give a carboxylic acid product. But just to give you a complete set of ways to create carboxylic acids, we can start straight away with an aldehyde reactant and oxidize that to give us a carboxylic acid product. So any aldehyde that we want to start with here, 
we can treat with a variety of oxidizing agents. And the product of that reaction will be a carboxylic acid replacing the carbon-hydrogen bond on that carbonyl of the aldehyde with a carbon-hydroxy bond. And in this particular reaction, all we need for this is a very weak oxidizing agent. So the oxidizing agents that we've talked about so far today, potassium permanganate, chromium-6 reagents, and bleach will all work really well for oxidizing aldehydes. In fact, aldehydes are so easily oxidized that even molecular oxygen in the environment, if given sufficient time, will act to oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. As a result, aldehydes are one of our less stable functional groups, and we generally have to be careful about how we store molecules that have aldehyde functional groups present in them. And in fact, this is one reason why if you look at drugs that are on the market today, very few of them have aldehyde functional groups because of the fact that that group is very easily oxidized and hence not particularly suitable for storage over the long term in environments that have oxygen, such as most environments that you could think of storing a drug in. So as a result, aldehydes are not particularly common functional groups that you will see within drug molecules.